Hey, it's Justin from Brittany Sunday night, the 7th of August, and I'm going to knock out a quick video, quick in part because I'm exhausted. I just played a rare round of golf, which was uh, not great. You should not come to this channel looking for golf tips. Um, and I'm going to film this video talking about the biggest mistake that people make in federal prison. And as much as I try to play golf today, I had my iPhone in my pocket, but my wonderful wife for Hanukkah bought me this Apple Watch. So it's on and text messages can come. And uh, on the 14th hole and what was a very long day, I got a text message from a defendant who has been released and he's on probation. And as I have said before, about 20% of the defendants that reach out to me have completed their term in federal prison. I texted him in between holes, letting him know that I'd reach out to him when my rare round of golf was over. Uh, and on my way home, uh, I spoke with him. And I was just so frustrated because when I um, chatted with him, it was obvious that his time in prison was, was a waste. And the biggest mistake, the number one mistake that people make in federal prison is letting the time or feeling like they're serving time rather than letting the time serve you. There's this d disconnect that because you're in prison that it's impossible to accomplish things. I don't do the Tony Robbins shtick. I don't do motivational training. I, I don't do that. Um, of course, everyone watching this, if you're going to prison, you don't want to be there, of course. But if you are there, never forget that just because your body is there, your mind is free to roam. You're free to do things you never could have imagined in your wildest dreams. No texting for a little while. Run a marathon. Run two. Run 10 miles. Run 20. Fast. Take classes. Learn a second language. Write love letters to your wife. Read books alongside your children. And when I spoke with this defendant, he actually just texted me. I'm sorry for the distraction. When I spoke with this defendant, he didn't do any of that in prison. He was so fixated on all that he had lost. And I know, much, I know how much we can lose traversing the criminal justice system, our money, our careers, our reputations. I understand it. So while there, it's so easy to fixate on those things that we don't make measurable progress. Or we work on things that bear no resemblance to the life we want to lead upon release. And one thing prison can be is a great equalizer. I had a lot of opportunities in life that I wasted. A degree from USC, parents that spoiled me rotten, that gave me opportunities that many people watching this video could only dream. And, and rather than feel grateful for them, I took advantage of them and I embarrassed them and I hurt them. And I squandered some opportunities that a lot of wonderful people in prison didn't have, including my bunkie, my first monkey serving two decades for a drug crime. So I realized that in prison, that I had wasted these opportunities and I wanted to make amends. There are some white collar offenders who do not seize that same opportunity. Whereas maybe another offender, whether white collar or a drug offender, who did not have those same opportunities in life, begins to play catch up, begins to work hard, begins to see the prison term as an opportunity. ED, maybe it's associate degree, maybe it's college courses, maybe it's growing your network, maybe it's writing a book, a blog, getting in shape, learning a new trade or skill or craft that can bring some meaning to your prison term. Because this is how it's an equalizer. When everyone gets out of jail, whether you're rich or poor, educated or uneducated, you're convicted felons. The field in many ways is evened out. I'm not insinuating that it's totally even, so no need to send any you know mean emails that my experience doesn't compare to others. I recognize my experience in many ways was easier because of my youth, I wasn't married. I didn't have children. I understand it. I've gotten enough of those messages over the years. What I'm trying to convey in this video, and what was so frustrating having this call this evening after this awful round of golf I played with this educated white collar defendant, was that he didn't see the possibilities from his term in federal prison. He got caught up in the, the nonsense, the complaining, the, um, the ridiculous notion that maybe should, he should have gone to trial. And I wrote a blog um, earlier today about understanding your tendencies. I've written many of them. And he didn't understand his tendency that he could be easily swayed or manipulated, which he could be because he associated with the wrong people in prison. So let me wrap up this probably one of my shorter videos. Some of you are probably saying, wow, can he actually do a video beneath seven minutes? I, I can, I promise. Hold on. I can. Here it goes. Even though your body might be in prison, your mind again is free to roam. Grow the network. Write letters. I got a call earlier this week from someone that said, hey, are there any resources or programs um, to help my loved one get a job in the halfway house? I said, yes, you're his resource. He said, what do you mean? 
I said, uh, go to Google. Where's your husband releasing to? This is the area. Great. Let's have some fun. Let's pull up 40 potential employers where he's going to release. Let's have your husband write him a letter from prison. Well, who's going to read it? I don't know. Maybe 39 of them get thrown out. Maybe all 40. Then you do another 40. You write a letter. Hello, my name is Joe Smith. I'm currently serving time at Taft Federal Prison Camp. I've been here for a little more than 18 months, and I'm getting ready to come home. I made some terrible decisions without thinking about how it would influence my family, but I'm better than some bad decisions. Let me tell you what I've done since I've surrendered to prison. Tell them what you've done. Talk about how you've made amends. I'll be released into the Half-White House in the next six months, and I'd be grateful if you consider giving me an opportunity to work for you. It's so my good friend Michael Santos, or my mentor Michael Santos wrote in a book of his, when he was in prison, he felt like he was a fisherman akin at sea, casting lines to feed himself. That is what you must become from prison. Even though your body is there, work, run, write, read, think, get creative and do things you never could have imagined because just like that, the bills are going to be back when you cross over to the wrong, when you cross over, you know, back home, those bills are going to be right back in front of you and the expectations and, and the pressures will be right there. And if you haven't been proactive throughout your experience, if you haven't owned the experience and made the most of it, you'll have even more regrets um, than you could possibly imagine. And those were the regrets this gentleman was dealing with, knowing that he had wasted a golden time, uh, a golden time in federal prison to recalibrate. So for those of you watching, if someone were to say to me, Justin, What's the biggest mistake that people make in federal prison? It's not the wrong job. It's not the wrong bunk. It's not even going to the wrong prison. It's not owning the reality and making sure that you're not serving time. I beg you, make the time your friend. Let the time serve you. If you do, you will emerge differently than um, so many of the good people that reach out to me looking for do-overs. Thank you for your time. I hope you found value in this video. Uh, subscribe to learn more. Bye-bye.